We got a pretty iconic Benjamin Moore color here called wrought iron. It's described as a shade of black beloved for its relatively soft, malleable character. Malleable meaning like you can mold it and stuff. But I think it's simply more so an awesome off black that happens to be one of the company's best selling colors. Off blacks like this are a very interesting paint color category to focus on when it comes to interiors because they can work in a variety of different ways really. It's very close to the forever popular black, although it has more of a softness to it that can sit alongside other paint colors without being as contrasty. I'm about to give you some details on wrought iron so you can know how to use it in your home. And I'm also gonna throw some other paint colors at you that you can use around it on the walls, in the same space, or in different rooms for your home. So a nice little color palette to work with. Finally, I'll also give you two other trim color options that you can paint your baseboards with if you want wrought iron on your walls, for example. A big thank you to you for joining us. And let's get into this video. So when it comes to paint color trends, we see a lot of movement from light to dark, neutral to vibrant, green to red. But for quite a while, variations of black have been fairly constant in the zeitgeist of paint colors, I guess. I think a big part of that is many of the things that we have off of the walls in our home can contain black, whether it's fixtures, furniture, things like table and chair legs, even the electronics you use. And the beauty of black is it's uniquely dark darker than any other color really, but also tends to feel fairly neutral and muted because it doesn't have overly prominent undertones present, at least most of the time. So why am I talking about black when today's color wrought iron is a little more of an off black? Well, the fun thing is wrought iron is as close to black as you can get without being overly dark. And we can determine the exact darkness of this color by looking at its LRV or light reflectance value. On the Benjamin Moore website, we can see that it has an 8.17, which means this color reflects only about 8% of the light that hits it, which is not very much. A more true black is all the way down to about a 3% LRV. So 8% is actually quite a bit lighter, which is what makes wrought iron so desirable in my eyes. There's something a little more up-to-date feeling when you're dealing with a very dark charcoal gray like wrought iron versus a deadpan jet black. It feels a touch easier on the eyes, I find. It also allows other more true black things in your space to stand out a little bit against it. So that can give your overall decor a little more of a subtle dimension. It's also the same argument I have with using the brightest whites all the time or more specifically not having to use the brightest whites because sometimes going all the way white or black isn't the answer. A little nuance never really hurt nobody, right? So off blacks, off whites, very cool. Undertones wise, I would call wrought iron extremely true to itself as a straightforward mega dark gray. Although I find that there are no true neutrals in practical use because there are other factors that can pull a color in different directions. If anything, I have known wrought iron to show the very softest blue undertone in more situations than not. And a big part of that is the type of lighting that is most often exposed to that color. So I find that a lot of people like to use wrought iron outside on maybe their front door or garage door. And guess what? Outside you have a big light source, which is the sun producing a lot of that cooler, brighter blue light, which can therefore turn your black or your off black into a basically a dark navy blue. But I do find that if you give it some warmer incandescent leaning light, that blue will really mellow out, which will just leave you with that rich off black that you were kind of going for, I'm guessing. This is a color you can use on fun exposed basement ceilings, kind of like what I've done. I also find it's great as an accent wall choice or even on a kitchen island. It's also great on interior doors if you want more of a contrasty look with your white trim perhaps. There's a lot you can do here. And a large part of that is because even though it has a guess that blue shift, it's pretty neutral. Let's get into some fun wall color options to use alongside it. And the first one is maybe not the most obvious choice, but that's part of the reason I picked it. It's called Sugar Cookie. And it's a very light off-white with an LRV right around 86, 
which you can sort of extrapolate into being basically 10 times brighter than wrought iron. The color itself is a very creamy, buttery color that can really give some awesome juxtaposition from dark to light. I like a color like this in brighter areas that get a lot of light, believe it or not, because if you were to instead use sugar cookie in a dimly lit room, it may start to lose some of its subtle warm nuances and can feel a bit dingy. But throwing this in the area of your homes that you use a lot during the day, it could be an awesome choice. And then wrought iron, on the other hand, can be in the more grounded parts of your home that maybe you wanna wind down in, like a theater room, if you're lucky to have one. <laughs> Next up is Revere Pewter, which is an iconic, warm, neutral paint color that is extremely transitional in nature, meaning it can help bridge the transition or the gap between warm and cool, which we have with wrought iron and sugar cookie. This color is a tried and true neutral that you can use pretty extensively in your home as that sort of reset point neutral base color. It's a touch darker than I would normally recommend going for in places like hallways, but I also feel that it's perfect balance of undertones allow it to kind of get away with being a little more deep closer to mid-tone territory. The third color is very much the accent, and you don't need me to tell you because you'll just know when you see it. It was the color I was gunning for, for color of the year, in the video I did with Nick Lewis. It's called Peanut Butter. And say what you will, I just love this exciting combination of gold, orange, and brown. You really need to use it sparingly, however, because it could be a bit over the top in your space on all the walls. And also be very careful with cooler lighting because you don't want that brown aspect to become a bit muddied. But even in this picture, we see the chandelier sort of has that wrought iron coloration, don't you think? So a great example of how to use these colors together. I also feel that peanut butter and sugar cookie are a really great match, both aesthetically and they also just sound delicious together, don't they? Peanut butter sugar cookie, mm. Finally, we have our trim colors. And I picked a light and a kind of dark option because wrought iron is already so dark itself. There's nothing stopping you from continuing wrought iron from your walls onto your trim. I always think that's a totally solid choice, but just make sure that you use wall paint on the walls and trim paint on the trim. Don't be a lazy landlord. For the light color, I wanna go with white ice. It's a very clean, crisp, cool white that just has the slightest hint of blue, which works perfectly against wrought iron. Their cool aspects fit together in a really harmonious way. And then the darker option sort of splits the difference in deep silver. And this is a paint color that's part of the same family of colors as wrought iron, just two shades lighter. That is kind of a useful trick you can borrow with the color preview line by Benjamin Moore specifically. And those are those colors that are in the 2000s in terms of their color code. And then they have dash 10, dash 20, dash 30. You get the idea. You can usually go up and down these color chips if you want a lighter or darker variation of any color hue. I would recommend at least skipping one shade if you're using this strategy to have some more visible contrast. And that's exactly what I did here. Here's the color palette all together. Let me know what you think. And here's another one for your entertainment. Enterpaintment? I'm not even gonna say that was cheesy. I'm just gonna own it.